Here we are, and this is certainly a match that is going to define the career of at least one man, if not many men. Possibly eight men, because that's how many men have been entered into the first ever CWF Cage of Death. And that's right, I mean, you know, we don't set up a cage very often here in the CSA, and it's usually a uh, unpleasant sight when we do. We want to go ahead and warn you that if you've got small children, you might not want them around, especially towards the latter portions of this match. But, you know, the promise is someone's either going to get unmasked or shaved bald before the night's over with, and we've got eight guys to go through. Ladies and gentlemen, we're getting ready to go on here. I also, I, I forgot, forgive me, I do need a steel chair because I'm going to set it right here, right next to the extension cord and these clippers for after this match. Yes, this all came to a head because of the rivalry between Kamikaze Kid and Gemini Kid. We thought we'd seen it all in Kazi's rules, the thumbtacks, the ladders, the tables, the chairs. But apparently we hadn't Ladies quite seen it all yet, Randolph. Door, I want to assure you that this is a padlock and chain. They will not be coming through this door. 
For seven minutes, they have to go at it. No holes barred. Anything goes, they have to go over the top of the cage to the floor. When it gets down to two opponents, I will then open the cage, allow a referee, and there will be the two final combatants will have a match. The loser will be unmasked or go bald. As Kamikaze Kid drafted three individuals, a Gemini Kid drafted three individuals that they could lead into battle. It's, this matchup is built on simply the revenge between Kamikaze Kid and Gemini Kid. But all men have something at stake here. A microphone to identify himself to the fans. As you see the rules of Cage of Death, only one man will lose it all. It is a team concept, but it's pretty much also every man for themselves. Both men have drafted their choosing of the individuals they can trust they can trust the most. But we will see how much that actually comes into play. And because as each man escapes, they save themselves from being either unmasked or being shaven completely bald. I mean, can you imagine what happens tonight? If Gemini Kid gets his way and Kamikaze Kid is unmasked, but I mean, could you imagine talking about bizarre? What happens if Solomon Spades gets shaved? Well, right now the bell is rung and we have a fight of the ultimate magnitude underway as everyone is paired off and they're going to pound, but no rivalry is as fierce as the one between Gemini Kid and the Kamikaze Kid. Yeah, no surprise those two squared off together right now. Gemini Kid about to get introduced face first to the steel cage. Finding it for everything he has. Because when your face eats that steel mesh, you better believe it, it will scar you for life. Look at this Ultra Dragon. Got Connor in the corner. McAllister, what did he do? Go to the eyes of Ortega, trying to get an advantage, backs him up into the corner. This is going to get bad before it gets good. Gemini Kid drafted Michael McAllister as his ace in the hole of all things. I'm not sure what that term's even supposed to mean, especially with what we've seen in the past with him. Now, Solomon Spades, I certainly understand. Now, Kazi drafted, of course, his longtime friend, Ultra Dragon, his masked comrade in arms, so to speak. But he also drafted Jesse Ortega, who Gemini Kid actually wanted to make Ortega his first draft pick, but Kazi won the coin toss and, of course, took his friend Ortega instead. And then Kazi drafted the Boogie Woogie Man, Rob McBride. Now, Rob McBride has done cage matches in the past, but Rob McBride's never been in a cage match where you had to leave by going over the cage. You can't escape through the door. And there's been a lot of talk in the past couple weeks. Can Rob McBride actually get up and over the cage? Well, I'm not gonna say, but little birdie tells me that McBride's not very fond of heights. But if I know him, the fighter he is, he's not gonna sit there and let somebody beat him up. You know, if he's got a way out, I'm sure he'll take it. But right now, Solomon Spade's going to work on Ultra Dragon. Kamikaze Kid going to work on McAllister, trying to get him off the boogeyman. As, you know, this is going to get brutal. Yeah, and there's all kinds of combinations that this match could come down to because once it gets to the final two competitors, once everyone else has escaped, it's actually then going to become a singles match inside the cage, pinfall or submission only. That's right, Gemini Kid flat back first onto the canvas again, courtesy Kamikaze. As you see the Boogie Woogie Man trying to tenderize that face of Michael McAllister over here against the steel cage. Hurricane Rana there by Dragon, and I've really been wondering if by Gemini Kid making Michael McAllister his ace in the hole, that was Gemini's insurance policy. Say Gemini Kid gets stuck inside the cage late, what if it's Gemini McAllister? Because you know he would sacrifice McAllister in a heartbeat if it meant saving his own hair. Well, I, I'm sure he would. You know, Gemini Kid's coming across as a very vain individual, especially since his controversial win of the 2006 Johnny Weaver Invitational Cup this year. And the, the fans are about fed up with him. I mean, there's been a 360 change in his whole attitude over the past few months, but 
I believe he just met the boot of the Boogie Woogie Man. Yeah, there's no disqualification. Anything goes in this one. And of course, Brad Stutz is running around ringside trying to scream as many instructions as possible to his man, Mitch Connor. And look at this, El Fuego trying to go to the top using the back of McAllister as a stepping stone. Mitch Connor and Ron McBride, boy, they have had a lot of battles in 2006 for all kinds of titles, and this cage match is just another step in that feud. And right now, you see Solomon Spakes trying to do a little traffic directing of his own. He's keeping his eyes open. Anytime he sees someone from the other team with the upper hand, he wants to lend a hand. And right now, the Boogie Woogie Man and Gemini Kid are about to meet the steel. Well, everyone's still so fresh in this match. Everyone's so far been able to block their head going into that steel match. But I'm willing to bet as the match continues and people become weaker, you're definitely going to see some forehead scraped across that unforgiving steel. That's right. You see Mitch Connor trying to take out the Boogie Woogie man shots the midsection looks like kamikaze and ortega doing a little double team work over here McAllister just got pancaked into the corner and kazi following up with one of his own just for good measure gemini kid trying to choke the life out of dragon and drive his mask into the steel cage Ortega sails in, takes him some of McAllister too, whips him out of the corner, sets him up for a spinal tap. Oh, and a drop kick straight to the back of the head. You're definitely gonna see a lot of brutality in this match because it's all based upon Kamikaze Kid versus Gemini Ken. What the heck did Mitch Connor have there? Had some kind of stick and now trying to escape Ultra Dragon with the stick. This is not for the faint of heart. Fans don't try this at home. And I dare say Dragon's tapping it. I believe, unless I'm mistaken, that stick was placed inside the steel cage by Brad Stutz because it was small enough to hand through the mesh to Mitch Connor, but that obviously backfired in a big way. That's right, look at this Gemini kid down face first on the canvas. Ortega working him over. Mitch Connor's got it in reverse, but then here comes Boogie Woogie Man into the field oh! and squishes McAllister. Well, if I'm a betting man, Michael McAllister will indeed be one of the final two in this contest because he has been pulverized so far. Well, you, if they shave McAllister's head to the Elvis sideburn stay, I think he looked cool, completely bald with the sideburns. Well, that, that's a possibility here. Gemini Kid back over here in the corner. You know, Gemini's kind of fighting pretty smart. I mean, he's taking some brutality, but then every chance he gets, he's catching his breath. You see Ortega deposited up on the top rope. You gotta wonder if he's not thinking about getting out of this match. Of course, that demented individual Solomon Spades that have scared the tar out of so many of our fans here at the CSA with those bizarre interviews he's done. Just a minute. Oh, Ortega flew into Solomon Spades and half Powerbomb, half Hurricane Rana. Both men had a terrible collision there. You see Kamikaze Kid over here in this far corner trying to get back up to his feet. Looks like Connor and Ortega still going at it hot and heavy. It looks like Ultra Dragon. Oh, Ultra Dragon taking a beating at the hands of Gemini Solomon. with a save by Kamikaze Solomon. Kid. Kazi. No matter where he goes, he always goes right back to Gemini Kid. Ortega and Mitch Connor jockeying for position. Of course, it was Mitch Connor that ended Jesse Ortega's reign as television champion. Rob McBride, power bomb on Michael McAllister. And it's safe to say that no one's been abused as much in this match as Michael McAllister. Hey, but that's why we pay him the big bucks. We like seeing McAllister getting abused. Gemini, he's Dragon, but Dragon went to the top rope, and Dragon is escaping. Dragon has become the first man to escape the cage of death. Yeah, the smartest man in this match right now is Ultra Dragon. Is, he has saved his mask, and right now it's three on four in the ring. I mean, this thing continues till we get down to two. Of course, the problem is Dragon, by escaping, he has left his friends 
especially kamikaze in a pretty much what amounts to a handicap match. Well, look at this, it's like the boogie woogie man's trying, well, he's thinking about getting up the top rope. He's shaking his head there. Well, I think that told an awfully large story, Randolph, because Rob McBride had the opportunity to escape because actually no one was paying him any bit of attention and Rob McBride got to the top rope and realized that, I, don't, I guess he realized that he could not make it over. And that does not sit well with Rob McBride fans, I'm sure. Yeah, Rob McBride, I mean, that, that makes me think that he is going to stick around late in this match. But right now, Mitch Conner trying to tear up the chest. Hey, look at this. Offense out of McAllister. Of course, if Rob McBride is one of the final two, I guess you'd say he still has at least a fighting chance because of his experience in cage matches previously. But still, you just do not want to be one of those final two. Yeah, definitely. And he's tasting the knees. Of, oh my goodness of Connor right into the right into the fence and back down. Look at this. Gemini kid and kamikaze kid. This is what started it all, and it looks like finally somebody's gonna get tore up over here in the fence. Solomon Spades holding Michael McAllister, who's going all the way to the top rope and bringing the hammer down on El Fuego, Jesse Ortega. Why did I suddenly think that Mr. Ace in the hole was gonna go up over the top? Hey, couldn't blame hey, Gemini's tapping. Gemini Kid is indeed tapping out, but this portion of the match is only escape from the cage only. And right now, McAllister and all the other team members. Oh God, a coat hanger? Brad Stutz has slid a coat hanger into the cage with Mitch Connors impaling upon the forehead of Robin McBride as McAllister now holds Jess you are taking for Solomon Spades to get a turn out of it. Solomon Spades is going up and over and has outsmarted his own teammate. He outsmarted the ace in the hole for sure. Spades saves himself for another day and he's almost hysterical on the way out. What a bizarre individual that is. I'm not sure why Gemini Kid drafted him, but regardless, Solomon Spades has escaped the cage of death, and I don't, he may be laughing as much at McAllister and his own teammates as he was the opposition. I mean, would it be a joke if McAllister gets his head shaved? Would it be a joke to Solomon Spades? I mean, I'm sure he'd laugh at it. I don't know what goes through his mind. Right now, look at the knees of Ortega into the chin of Connor over here in the corner. These guys trying to regroup. Uh, well, I think Rob McBride just threw something out of the ring there that Ortega had planned on choking Mitch Connor with. I think uh, Jesse Ortega was a little upset that that, one, that, that piece of uh, material went flying out of the cage. And I'm sure right now Mitch Connor's upset that he's taking those chops across the middle of the chest there. As Ortega finally goes over, gets his hands once again on Gemini Kid. <laughs> Connor's feeling a little bit of heat over here in the no. chest as Boogie's trying to go up again. Ron McBride, he's, he has the opportunity yet again to go out and... Ron McBride! Ron McBride can't get out of the cage! It's either that or he wants to go back in and fight some more. I mean, it is Ultimate Survivor 4. No, no he had that one leg up, Randolph. I think Ron McBride could not actually get up and over the cage. And I tell you what, Rob McBride has got hold of Gemini Kid right now. I'm sure Gemini Kid wouldn't mind if Rob McBride got out of the cage at this point. Okazi oh, oh, just had a chance to escape as well, but instead of escaping, he turned and just kicked Gemini Kid square in the mush. It looks like Michael McAllister has got the Boogie Woogie Man. Boogie's trying to fight his way off the cage, and what is this? Brad Stutz has slid Mitch Connor a spoon now. A spoon. What in the, how many- He's thrown everything in there but the kitchen sink. What in the world's going on here? <laughs> Mitch Connor trying to hammer his way out of the hole. Jesse Ortega has him in. Hey, what, fatigue's starting to set in on these guys right now. They have been beating the fire out of each other, and this thing's still going on. I mean, it's got to get down to two. Look at this, Gemini Kid trying to get out. Oh, and you better believe Gemini Kid wouldn't have thought twice about it. Gemini Kid would have been over that top rope quick as possible, but Kamikaze Kid made a diving save. They're up on the top rope, battling up here on the top of the fence. Precarious situation as Gemini Kid's getting his face introduced to the pole up here on the top. Another kick right to the face by Kazi, who may be looking to fly. I think Kazi is looking to fly. Elbow right to the back of Gemini. Yeah, he asked, he asked Ortega to step aside so he could drop that on him. And look at this. Boogie's going back to the top again. He's over here in the corner with the door. And yeah, he's definitely going over this time. Well, I thought he was. Is Robin Bright stuck? 
Or is Titan stuck on the fence? What's going on here? I, I don't know. I, Rob McBride has no way to get down. Rob McBride appears to be stuck on top of the cage. With, I, there's no way out for sure because it's a lot longer of a fall outside than it would be inside. Kylie's trying to help him, but I don't know if Rob McBride wants help. And I tell you what, McBride is, is perched up there on the top. I mean, this is a photo op you don't want to be in if you're McBride. I mean, if you want what, Tank Lawson. That, that's Rob McBride's Tag Team Championship partner, Tank Lawson. Hey, anything goes, anything goes. Tank Lawson has retrieved a ladder from underneath the ring. Tank Lawson is trying to help out his good friend, Rob McBride, who hangs precariously across the top oh, of the cage of death. Look at this, he's got the feet on the ladder and down he comes. McBride has safely made his way out of the cage of death. Tank Lawson has just rescued his friend. Rob McBride couldn't do it himself. Hey, can he come in the match? Can Tank enter the match? I, I'd be careful, I, although Tank doesn't have much to lose because he doesn't have any hair. Yeah, he doesn't wear a mask, but right now, I mean, he's getting congratulated, getting a thanks for that helping hand as Boogie exits the arena. I don't know, Randolph. I would not want to be getting in the cage of death if I didn't have to. And right now, Jesse Ortega looks on his kamikaze kid. He's going off on Gemini Kid back over here in the corner again. Well, it's just Kazi and Jesse Ortega on the team. What in the heck is Brad Stunt? That is the kitchen sink! It's the kitchen sink! And Brad Stunt cannot squeeze the kitchen sink through the cage! Hey, look, the kitchen sink's performing a pin on Stunt's at ringside! Michael McAllister refusing to avalanche Gemini Kid in the corner, but Kazi helped him and. Oh, Mitch Connor wants a shot at Gemini for drafting him into this match in the first place. What a turnaround. Oh, no. What a turnaround. It's a 180 degree turnaround as Mitch Connor made a beeline to the corner to escape the cage of death. I think it's more to, to help his manager Stutz escape from the kitchen sink that had him pinned here at ringside, maybe. What a brilliant tactical maneuver by Mitch Connor to escape the cage of death. I tell you what, they bought it in the ring too. I mean, it's just, and we're down to four now. Kamikaze Ortega, McAllister, and oh my goodness, Gemini Kid climbing to the top. Gemini Kid is indeed climbing to the top. It is two on two. And I can't say I'm shocked that Kazi and Gemini are still in there because you know Kazi is going to try and stay and fight Gemini Kid and pummel and embarrass him as much as humanly possible. That's right. And I tell you what, Jesse Ortega is going to come in and unleash, going across the top of the head, putting a boots to Gemini Kid and Kamikaze back on him. McAllister cowering over in the corner. Yeah, Ortega taking a few shots at his very own trainer there, Gemini Kid. And look at this, double flapjack on Gemini. Gemini face first to the canvas. McAllister still cowering over in the corner, just barely able to keep to his feet as Kamikaze and Ortega start taking apart the Dojo Master. McAllister had his opportunity because Kazi and Jesse were paying far more attention to Gemini than they were him. They're letting him go? I don't. They would rather beat up on Gemini than protect. Oh, come on. I want to see Elvis get his sideburns cut off. Michael McAllister, Gemini Kid's ace in the hole, has escaped the cage of death because Kazi and Jesse Ortega pretty much turned their back and their attention towards Gemini Kid, allowing McAllister to escape. And I tell you what, Gemini Kid's pretty much helpless in the ring. It's two on one, and he gets no help inside this cage. I mean, that cage works, works both ways. He is trapped inside with two guys who don't like him a lot right now. Make a wish, Kazi and Jesse, on the hamstrings of Gemini Kid. I tell you what, Gemini Kid is prone to be taking a beating right now, but you gotta think, Kazi or Ortega won is probably going to be making their way out. And I would bet it would be Ortega if I was a betting man to leave it down to these two for hair versus mask. But I'm telling you what, Jesse Ortega is watching his trainer get tore apart. Well, Kazi, did you see the intensity on Kazi? I think Jesse's almost trying to calm Kazi down and remind him that he can leave if he wants. He can leave the cage because Gemini Kid is basically immobile. Well, you know, Kazi wouldn't stop Ortega from, from leaving, but... Kazi's up to the top rope, and here he comes, dropping in across the leg 
of Gemini Kid. Gemini Kid couldn't get out of this ring right now. He had a clear opportunity. You know, I, I started to get the impression that Kazi wouldn't mind being one of the final two as long as the other one's Gemini Kid. Yeah, that, that's how it started. I mean, you see them, they're both in here signaling somebody's going to get their head shaved. Yeah, no one's in any rush right now because Gemini Kid is pretty much completely incapacitated. Look at this. Kamikaze invites Ortega to go ahead and step out and make this thing 101. And there goes Ortega up to the top rope. We're getting ready to see one on one. Hair against mask. Oh, my legs just ain't breaking my legs. Gemini Kid is screaming the name of Jesse Ortega. Come on, Jesse, jump on out of this thing. There's no reason for this. Gemini Kid is trying to appeal, I guess, to the heart of Jesse Ortega. Oh my God! He's beat. He's killing it. I mean, I'm sure Ortega respects Gemini to some degree because he did train him and all, but that was Ortega's opportunity to get out of here. Ortega and Kamikaze having words here, and I tell you what. Ortega has got Kazi situated with his back oh, to Gemini. Gemini Kid just shoved Kazi straight into Jesse Ortega. Kazi didn't have a thing to do with that. Kamikaze Kid better hope that Ortega goes ahead and calls it. Hey! Ortega is attacking Kazi! You see that look on the face of Ortega? He knows Kazi didn't do anything. Ortega had his chance to leave. What is he doing? I'd hate to see the dissolving of a great tag team here in the Mid-Atlantic, but we're seeing it right now. Ortega, Kamikaze Kid going to the Oh, hell. what a takedown by Ortega from Kazi. If Ortega would have just left the blasted cage, it wouldn't even be fighting right now. Yeah, we'd have a bald Gemini Kid. This thing would be over. We'd all be going home. But as it stands, Fujiwara armbar, and look at this, Kazi rolls through it. Kazi and Ortega are fighting me. Don't... Kazi has Ortega locked up in a cross face submission and Gemini Kid, pay attention, someone pay attention to Gemini Kid. Gemini Kid's up to the top trying to make his way out while Ortega and Kazi battle it out. I mean, I don't guess to Gemini just getting out is all that matters at this point and he's got the leg up across the top he may be gone. Ortega just pulled the leg of Kazi. Ortega needs to let go of Kazi. They're gonna be, they're gonna be the final two. What is it? This is Dragon! What is Dragon doing back here? Oh, Dragon's made a costume change and he's climbing back up the ring and he smacked Gemini back onto the canvas. Well, thank God because Ortega was... Wait a minute, he's going to climb in. He's coming in. Well, Ortega was holding the leg of Kazi. Thank God someone stopped Gemini. Oh, my God. Ultra Dragon to the top of the cage. Dragon flies and crashes on everyone. Goodness, Ultra Dragon. I guess legally he's reinserted himself back into this match. Well, I don't know what you know the official ruling on that would be, but regardless of whether he's back in the match or not, thank God he stopped Gemini Kid. And I don't know what Jesse Ortega's problem is, but he was grabbing. I saw him grab the leg of Kazi to prevent Kazi from getting Gemini. I mean, I don't understand. I mean, you know, there's got to be a bond of some form between Ortega and Gemini Kid, but they've been going at it hot and heavy until Gemini started screaming. Well, at least we know Kazi and Dragon are still on the same page. I mean, sure, they've had their wars in the past, too, and no one will ever forget that matchup. And Dragon, Dragon's not leaving the cage. He's helping Kazi. Dragon up to the second rope. Big leg drop across the throat of Jesse Ortega. Randolph, I am so confused by the dynamics of what has transpired in the past five minutes. I have no idea what's going on with this contest. And I tell you what, the two masked men are trying to work over Gemini Kid, and they're sort of leaving Ortega over here on his own to catch his breath. And you've got to wonder, right now, Ortega's the wild card in this match, and you've got to wonder what's going through his head. I, I just hope Dragon didn't put himself in any danger by apparently re-entering this match. I, I don't... No one ever really talked about it beforehand, and you know, I, we kind of passed it off when Tate Lawson came up earlier. But well, Kazi and Dragon are about to head out of there, and what the heck are what is or, Ortega blatantly just made communication with Gemini Kid? There was obviously some collusion there between Ortega and Gemini. 
It looks like Dragon's back into the ring the hard way. Gemini Kid has pulled Kazi off of the fence. And now, what, are they gonna double take Kamikaze Kid? Well, I was hoping it was just some kind of miscommunication between Ortega and Gemini, but Jesse Ortega just helped Gemini Kid slam the head of Kazi in the steel cage. What in the world is going through the head of Jesse Ortega? Tell the world backbreaker on Dragon and Ziguri. Dragon only came to help Kazi because you were not doing it. Gemini Kid signaling for Ortega to get out of the ring. He's signaling they're both going to get out of the ring. This can't happen. There's no, no way. There's no way. No. The commissioner can't let this stand. I, I just don't understand why Jesse Ortega. I mean, Kazi did not do a thing to him. It's like Jesse Ortega had the opportunity to leave the cage and he stopped short because he had compassion for the Gemini Kid. Why in God's name would you have compassion for the Gemini Kid after his actions of the past few months? Yes, we've got bodies littering the entire ring area now. Kamikaze Kid coming off the top. Oh, what a drop kick to Ortega and a well-deserved one at that. Coming, you gotta keep your head up in this ring, ladies and gentlemen. Gemini Kid on his hands and knees and what? He's gonna go over here and try to start ripping away at the mask of Kamikaze Kid. Kazi trying to hang onto his mask. Gemini Kid's trying to unmask Kazi before the match has even reached its conclusion. Oh, Dragon spit all the way through on that tilt-a-whirl slingshot and Ortega in, but Ortega unfortunately did not crash in the cage because at this point, he might as well. I tell you what, Gemini is still ripping and tearing away at the mask of Kamikaze Kid. I mean, if he unmasked the man right here, I mean, how does that affect the outcome of the match? I mean, I thought that was the stipulation to end the match. Oh, here comes Dragon. Oh, dear God! Dragon elevated straight, his back ripped into the cage. Gemini Kid ripping apart the very mask, the very dignity of the Kamikaze Kid. Kamikaze Kid in a world of hurt right now. Gemini with that cocky pose over the top of him again. And look at this. Talk about a picture. What? Talk about a picture. That's a picture of two of the biggest turncoats in mid-Atlantic history. How dare you, Ortega? I, I cannot believe what you have pulled in this contest. You caused Kamikaze Kid a sure thing, a one-on-one -on -one match inside the steel cage with Gemini Kid. You felt compassion for your trainer after everything he's done to you? Oh, Ortega powerbombing the back, which scrapes across the steel mesh. Dragon, though, trying to fight his way out of it, still perched up high the shoulders of Ortega. Hurricane Rana slings Ortega into the cage. Ortega tied up in the cage over here. Kamikaze and Gemini still going at it tooth and nail. Kazi finally back up to his feet, and there goes Gemini face first into the cage. Well, without any form of official ruling, I, I'm going to have to say it's fair to say that Ultra Dragon has officially re-entered himself into this contest, and you better believe we've got a tag team match, and Gemini Kid has it deep in, busted wide open. And I tell you what, that still is unforgiving, and the face is lacerated, and look at this. What's he got? Oh, some more eating utensils. Hey, that, that must have been a fork left over from Mitch Connor inside the cage, and Kazi is driving the fork inside the head, maybe inside the eye of Gemini Kid. Gemini Kid wishing he had got out of this match when he had a chance, and right now Kazi is taking it to him, just grinding the flesh onto the steel cage. Hey, yeah, you want to rip Kazi's mask off? How does it feel when your very skin gets ripped off? That's right. I mean, we're talking scalp here. He is well into the scalp here, blood gushing. Kamikaze Kid finally getting a little bit of oh. retribution here. Well, I rammed him hard right into the cage. But Dragon, Kazi's old friend, Ultra Dragon, getting rammed in as well. And Kazi finally turning his attention to Jesse Ortega. I tell you what, Dragon hung out to dry over here on the ropes. Here comes Ortega in with a... Oh! Jesse Ortega has viciously assaulted Kamikaze Kid and Ultra Dragon, not only physically, but quite possibly mentally as well. I tell you what, he is just beating the fire out of Ultra Dragon. He's limp as a wet wash rag over here in the ropes. Kazi's down, it's two on one on Kazi now. I, I just cannot understand. I cannot fathom the actions of Jesse Ortega. 
backdrop, Kazi, much like Dragon, the back, the flesh, scraping across the steel cage all the way down. You can see it. Double drop kick to the skull and body of Ultra Dragon. I'm not even sure Dragon's conscious at this point. You can't tell with a mask anyway. But right now, the bloody Gemini kid, you figure him and Ortega would be looking for a way out of this thing. Well, God bless Ultra Dragon for coming back and trying to do what Jesse Ortega refused to do, and that is help Kamikaze Kid in his quest to end the Gemini Kid. Yeah, there's no gray area here. There's right and wrong, and what Ortega's doing right now is definitely wrong. It's against his character, and now you see it. Gemini and Ortega both going to the top. Kamikaze gonna try one last time. Ho oh, ho! And I don't blame him in the anything least. Anything goes. Anything goes. Exactly. I don't blame him in the least. Wait a minute. We may have a race going here. Kazi's going up to the top as well of El Fuego, pounding the skull onto the steel cage. We've got four men inside a squared circle, and not a single foot is on the canvas, Randolph. And right now, this is getting crazy. Kamikaze fighting with everything he's got left, going to the midsection of Ortega. Ortega slamming him back across the back. But I tell you what, Gemini Kid's still too close to the top for my comfort. I wish I could get him back down on the canvas. Oh, Gemini Kid trying to crush Dragon's head across the top of the cage. Oh, you know, you always knew Jesse Ortega was a very intense competitor, and I have no problem with that. But there's a difference between intensity and just flat out stabbing a friend in the back. Sure, you may have disagreements from time to time, but not like this! Ortega! Ortega's both legs almost over! Gemini Kid's got one leg over! Kazi and Dragon are both on the canvas! Ortega! Ortega's looking straight in the face in the eyes of Kamikaze again! Gemini Kid is on the outside of the Gemini Kid has escaped the cage of death and Ortega just spit in the face of Kamikaze Kid! God, this puts Ultra Dragon versus Kamikaze Kid. No! Those are unmasked! No! This is not fair! No! No! I refuse to believe that! How dare you, Ortega! What a piece of crap! How dare you! Kazi had a one-on-one -on -one match with Gemini Kid that you stole! You took his! You took it away from him! I tell you what, talking about soiling the memory of the Johnny Weaver Cup, that whole tournament sold. Every time I see that man wearing that t-shirt, the past two victors in that tournament Walking off hand in hand like it's a nice spring day, the commissioner looking on in disbelief, and we still gotta settle this no, in the ring. I refuse. There is no, there is no reason for Kamikaze Kid and Ultra Dragon to have to wrestle one another. That's ridiculous, Randolph. Commissioner Cross is saying that's what the way it's gotta be because Dragon re-entered, but that's re there. No, that's not fair to Kazi. That's not fair to Dragon. That's not fair to a fan of this arena. That's not fair to anyone at this point. But I mean, Dragon had to know what he's getting into when he come back into the ring. He was the first man out and the only man to re-enter. I mean, both men knew the conditions of this match. They knew it. Oh my goodness. Well, we, we had a bell, Randolph, and blindside shot. It was a blindside shot, but we had a bell, and Commissioner Cross had already spoken the way it had to be. I mean, Kazi and Dragon have wrestled before. They can fight one another. They, they have no problem with that. But it's the conditions that they're being forced to fight under. That's what's wrong with this. Moonsault by Dragon. We've got an official Red Jones making a count, just a two, thankfully. And this match shouldn't even be happening right now. It's because of Jesse Ortega and Gemini Kid that we're even having to watch these two friends wrestle. Yeah, Red Jones made his way in. They opened the cage door. Oh, DDT on Kamikaze Kid by Ultra Dragon. They're sealing the cage back up here. This cage of death here at Ultimate Survivor 4 has been more than anybody could have imagined, and we're not done yet. You think Dragon wants to make this cover? You think Dragon wants to try and pin his friend? No, Kazi drafted Dragon for this match because he could trust him, not because he might have to wrestle him. Kazi now fighting back, and it's so hard to even call this Randolph because you don't even want to believe it's happening. I mean, these are two of the marquee figures of CWF Mid-Atlantic. And you know, I mean, you're, we're looking on in horror knowing that one of these two will not be the same ever after tonight. I mean, both men are man enough to adhere to the stipulations. Look at that. 
Kazi can't even bring himself to attack his friend. I cannot wish to take this mask. I mean, he knows he has to, but he doesn't want to do it. God. You gotta, you've got to be seeing a lot of mixed emotions right now. Only a two count. I mean, that wasn't a very strong cover, but no, both, of, both of these men have got to be torn apart right now. Kazi's mask. His own mask is on the line, and he can't even bring himself to hook a leg. He loves this poor kid so much, and you know the feeling is mutual. Well, you know... Ooh! What a back kick by Ultra Dragon. Kazi hesitated so much there, it gave Dragon time to recoup. Oh my god. Both men tearing one another apart. Yeah, but I mean, look, look at the history of these two. The way these two met the very first time was Kazi was angry that Ultra Dragon made an appearance before he was ready. The legend of the Ultra Dragon set in stone, but I mean, one of these two legends are gonna end tonight. They've had one match ever, and that matchup was banned because it was so detrimental to that welfare of both men's, not only their careers, but their very lives, that they it was pretty much set in stone they could never fight again. And now because of Gemini Kid and Jesse Ortega, oh, oh, oh. Kazi caught it, Kazi caught Dragon that time, and this could, this could be it for Dragon right here and now. What? Oh! Rick and Rana, Dragon with the leg! With the arm, the arm was up! If you watch Dragon's leg, Dragon's leg was actually underneath Kazi's shoulder, and that prevented Red Jones from actually making the count. You've got to wonder what either one of these men's got left at this point. I mean, this has been a marathon, a grueling battle inside a steel cage. I mean, Kazi has been in the ring. For, God, I've almost lost track. Has it been like 40, 40 minutes at least, Randolph? Yeah, it's been 40 minutes or more already. Kazi is flat out on the canvas. And I mean, Dragon can go to the top, but he can't escape. There's got to be an end to this one now. Yeah, escape does you no good at this point. But I don't think he's trying to escape, Randolph. Ultra Dragon on the top. Sky Twister Press. No one home. Both competitors flat of their back in the middle of the ring. Referee Red Jones looking on. I mean, we can't have a count out in this one. There's got to be a winner. And they're battling as much mentally as they are physically. I mean, do you think Dragon really wanted to hit that maneuver? I don't know. I mean, both men know they have to win. Just neither one wants to win because they're fighting the one they care about the most. These two men's careers are interlocked almost from day one. I mean, it was Kazi that first brought this guy into CWF Mid-Atlantic, even though, like I said earlier, he arrived a little earlier than anticipated. And one man's career and life will change forever. After this match, Kazi ran hard into the boot. I'm Kazi Kid holding his face. And I tell you what, Ultra Dragon going back up to the top rope. He's not afraid of heights. He missed before. Can he hit this time? Oh. Kazi caught him. Oh, no. He's got him, cause he has him locked! My God, I don't know what in the world you called it, but Kazi just buried the body of Dragon with it. Dragon is not moving. He is breathing. We can see him breathing here at ringside, but he is not moving. Kamikaze Kid's calling for the referee. This one could be over. I don't think you'll see a leg hook, Randolph. Kazi on top. He got the leg. Oh, Dragon kick! Dragon kicked out, Randolph! He did get the leg, though. How in God's name the Dragon kick out? Kazi, it's like everything's so methodical because he's thinking like, do I really want to do this? Do I really want to win this? And he's hooking both arms. Kazi is going for the Picasso driver. And ladies and gentlemen, that, that will be it. The Picasso driver, Picasso, is not making a this, this crowd here is stunned. There is a scary silence. It's falling over the CSA, and the Kamikaze Kid does not even want to make a cover. And he's not making a cover. The referee Red Jones is standing by to make the count. But... Randolph, I don't have it in my heart to boo either man, to really cheer for either man at this point. Kazi on the top rope looking down. Oh, Kazi. 
Oh no, Kazi, no! No, this is suicidal. Kazi is on top of the cage! No one is home for the Sky Twister Press from Dragon. No one is home for the Corkscrew Sitan from Kazi. And there are two beaten and beloved men on the canvas. Only one can win this contest, but no one wants to see either man lose. Yeah, we were joking earlier about being here all night, and I believe we pretty much proved that to be the case. Ultimate Survivor 4, three matches. How are we gonna pull off three matches? What do you think, fans? It'll be the only time we ever see three matches to take up two DVDs. Cause this has been an event of epic proportions, and that is not some pathetic shill that is coming for someone that truly believes in CWF Mid-Atlantic and the product that we are offering as two men with the biggest hearts that you will ever see in this great sport are left alone inside a steel cage and only one can leave with their mask and dignity intact. Yeah, both men still fighting their way back up to a vertical base. I mean, they've, they've got to be exhausted. They're running on pure adrenaline right now, and you got to wonder if either one of them's got enough strength in them to pin the other man. Well, both men are slowly trying to climb. Both men have climbed this cage before with very little success. Jim and I can't adjust your take, I'm sure, are looking somewhere on laughing at what they have made these two friends do to one another in the final climatic stages of Cage of Death. And somewhere, God willing, there will be retribution to pay for both Gemini Kid and Jesse Ortega. Yeah, but look at this. We got both these men up finally to the top rope. What else can they do to each other? No. Kazi. No. Oh, dear no. God. No. 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 Not a powerbomb. No, Kazi. Boy, you can, you can feel the heartbeat of everyone in this arena pounding at Dragon now, hooking the arms of Kazi. Dragon, the fingers like Dragon has a crystal applied to Kazi on top of the cage. Oh my goodness, Kazi's arms are hooked here. I don't know how he's able to stay up in the vertical position right there. But look at this. He, he's fighting back and Dragon's precariously perched over the top of the cage he's right now. A fall from there would end it all, Randolph. And Kazi with Dragon teetering upon top oh, of the cage no. again. Kazi has him in a garbage carry from the very top of the cage of death. Oh. The belly driver of the top. Dragon is down. Kazi leaks an arm on top. The count, the cage of death has concluded for Ultra Dragon. Ultimate Survivor 4 ends, as does the legend of the Ultra Dragon, but it's not over yet. This, this is horrible. I hate seeing this. I hate having to broadcast this. And I tell you, I just don't know what, what this does to the whole complexion of CWF Mid-Atlantic, to the whole landscape, to the whole roster. Now with a change-up, Ortega turning his back on his friends. And I mean, and look at this now. Ultra Dragon is about to be unmasked. It was as heart-wrenching as it was dramatic. Not enough adjectives in the world to describe what we have watched transpire over the past 45 minutes or so in Cage of Death and Ultimate Survivor 4. And I hate to see it end like this, but it was certainly as unforgettable of a match as I have ever witnessed in the history of this promotion. Get off, get off take this match. Kamikaze Kid is already telling the commissioner he wants no part in unmasking his protege here. But you know the rules. Get off! No. That's a bunch of crap, and you know it. You should have seen Ultra Dragon may have been defeated in this contest, but let's not forget, the only reason Dra Ultra Dragon was even one of the final two is because he came to rescue a friend. Because the friend that was supposed to be Jesse Ortega wasn't there. So Ultra Dragon came to Kazi's aid, and may it may have backfired on him, but he did the right thing. I'm not letting him take it.
Take out Cross! 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 Take out
If you want me to, I'll do it. If you want me to, I'll do it. Let her do the CW up in a minute, Lanny. Two years ago, I came here, and uh, there, was a, there was a guy by the name of Mr. Cross. I was a little skinny kid, wore basketball shorts, and just wanted to come out and get my stuff. Yeah. And uh, he gave me a chance. You people accepted me. That's right. We still do, bro. They didn't accept me. There was people like, there was people like, Gemini Kid, Jesse Ortega, who, who hid behind you people, who, who they tricked and, and manipulated you, you all into, into loving them and, and doing anything for them. And if you think this is boring, you can get the hell out. And then you bust your ass every freaking weekend for nothing. These people yeah. know I come in here, I jump off these freaking cages, yeah. I land on my damn head. Yeah. Oh, I was like, thank you. Yeah. And there's yeah. assholes like you. Yeah. I've seen a lot of moments in this company's history. Some stand out more than others. But this moment that we have witnessed tonight with Ultra Dragon and Ryan Andrews, I don't think I've ever seen a moment in defeat that was so special, so heartwarming, so touching, and just, just real, Randolph. Yeah, it, it's really, it brings a, a sad end to a chapter, and as I've mentioned earlier in the telecast, and the ultimate, ultimate, the Ultra Dragons legend, I suppose does come to an end tonight, but I mean, Ryan Andrews is still alive. I suppose he will continue to compete. The spirit of Ultra Dragon will certainly live on forever in our hearts and minds. And Ryan Andrews, you can take the mask away, but you can't take the heart. And that kid has as much heart as anything I've ever Ladies seen. And, and it, it was a privilege 
to bring you this moment and these memories that Ultra Dragon has provided for all of us over the years. You're not the Ultra Dragon anymore, but you're always right here, right people? The warmth and love that this crowd has shown him tonight is as deserving as a response as you will ever see in professional wrestling and as real as anything you will ever see. You know, we saw two extremes tonight. We saw the extreme of honor and the extreme of dishonor. The honor being Ultra Dragon knowingly going back into a ring, putting his mask on the line and graciously giving up that mask when, it, when the tide was turned. I mean, it's just something you don't see every day. It was totally unexpected, but I guess the unexpected portion is all part of what we do. I mean, this is CWF Mid-Atlantic, and we're where the world comes to watch wrestling. See you next time.